Hello and welcome to a very special edition of our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. I'm here with Carrie Pickett. She is our Vice President of our Ministry of uh, Caris and our guest... What is the official thing? World Outreach. Reach. Yes. All of our offices. I think we have 16 offices around yep. the world. And so her and her husband, Mike, are just a, a vital part of everything that we're doing. And so, uh, man, praise God. We appreciate you joining us tonight. And this is a special edition because based on the COVID-19 virus and all of the things we're dealing with, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of apprehension about it, and I'm going to be sharing specifically from Psalms 91 things that will build your faith, and I know that I and Carrie and many of us here mm-hmm. have zero fear about this. It has not affected us, and you know, praise God, I just learned yesterday in a meeting with you and Andrew Wirtz that we are operating at 100% efficiency, mm-hmm. even though we have 52% of our staff is now working from home. Mm-hmm. We haven't dropped a thing. We're answering all the calls. And yep. It's so awesome. It's, it's awesome. We're just having a great time. God's mm-hmm. blessing us. And if you have struggled, I pray mm-hmm. that you've tuned in tonight to receive some encouragement because I'm going to share things with you from the Word of God that have encouraged me, and the same thing will work for you. So, mm-hmm. Carrie, share with them some things that are happening. We're going to have special broadcast yep. all week long just yes. to be able to counter all the negative things. That Amen. Have if you joined us last Tuesday, I know that we had a huge response, so thank you for tuning in, and lots of people were able to receive encouragement. And so what, if you missed it this last Sunday, we did Faith uh, faith Over Fear with Andrew and Friends. We had John Tesh, Jesse Duplantis, and Pastor Dwayne Sheriff. It was Awesome. Man, I got fired up listening to it. It was so good. And so we would encourage you to go to awmi.net and you can see the the archive of that. It was absolutely tremendous. It'd be a great asset to send to someone who's dealing with fear. But what we decided to do this whole week is have live streams this whole week. So you'll be able to have a Tuesday night live Bible study every night of the week with us. So we have some really special things planned. Tonight, Andrew's going to share on Psalms 91. And then tomorrow night, we have Billy Epperhart and Paul Milligan. Paul Milligan was our former CEO here at Karis Bible College and Andrew Womack Ministries. And then Billy Epperhart is our current CEO, and they're going to be talking about finances and how to deal with finances and look at all of that during this time. And so that will be tremendous for you. Also, then on Let Thursday... Let me just interject that, you know, the financial problems is... I, uh, President Trump said that that cause, the cure could be worse than the... The virus. The virus. Yeah. And finances are a big problem right now. So this yeah. is really going to be timely to have them. Yeah. They're both... Multi-millionaires, they know what they're talking about. They've yep. weathered some things, Weathers and they're going to have some great uh, scriptural uh, guidance for you in this Amen. Time. And then on Thursday night, Pastor Greg Moore, he's one of our instructors at Karis Bible College, a director of Karis Bible College. He's going to be sharing how do you minister to children, families, and non-believers during the time because we're surrounded. A lot of people are surrounded, you know, shut in with their families. And this is a great opportunity. God can use and just do some really great things in your families during this time. And then also on Friday, Ashley and Carly Teredes are going to be ministering on healing. So fear can touch you in multiple different ways, whether it's fine financial, whether it's your own health, whether you're concerned about your kids or family or your grandparents or your parents. And so this is just an activity this week just to counter fear on all the levels to see where you have your victory. So we encourage you to join us at 6 o'clock every night for the rest of this week. We have some really special things planned for you. It's going to be a great time. And so these are all special things that we're doing just to help counter some of the negative things that are being said. You aren't hearing very many positive things in the news. And so we are extending these live cast. Yes. And um, Sunday we had, I think at one time, we had 15,000 people viewing at one time. And I think a total of 119,000 yep. views. views. I yeah. don't know what all that means. but Yeah, it was, it was good. good. It was a lot. And people got encouraged. And, you, and John Tesh, he's one of the guys that was on. And, of course, he... Matter of fact, John and Connie are probably watching right now. So hi to John and <laughs> John Tesh and Connie Selica. But uh, he he said that they had a hundred and I think nineteen thousand views or something yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. And if you add those two together, that's over two hundred thousand people that saw this. And he he deals, you know, in the secular market and on he's been on Fox and all of these things. And he says that that's more than some of the news broadcasts. Yeah. 
Get a good dose good. of faith and get you ready for your week. This is awesome. So besides the things that we're going to do every evening, also our prayer ministers are standing by, not just in the evenings tonight to pray with you, but throughout the day. We have 24 hours a day, five days a week, our prayer ministers are standing by. So call us if you have anything that you would like prayer agreement on, 719-635-1111. This is a great number as well to give to friends and family. If they're struggling and they have no one to talk to or don't know who to talk to, this is a great great number to give them so they can get ministry. Um, so I think that's awesome. Also, everything that's going to be happening this week, we're going to have notes for. So awmi.net slash Bible study. If you have not signed up ever for our Bible study notes, you really want to do it this week because you're going to get a whole bunch of great information. When you sign up, then what we're able to do is we're able to send you the notes of all the teachers every time that uh, somebody ministers on Tuesday night. But then again, all this week, we're going to send those notes to you. So that'll be a real blessing. And if you, when you do that you also register to receive a free gift and this week we have a very applicable book is harnessing your emotions by andrew womack and it is phenomenal i would encourage you to get this book uh if somebody needs it order it from our helpline they'll be able to help you with that last week we had um lessons from elijah and michael michael chen you won that so michael we're going to get that book out to you so we just have some great things we just believe in you guys we're here to minister to you and we're so glad that you joined us tonight so and, you know, it says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, the Lord will keep him in perfect peace mm-hmm. whose mind is stayed upon him because he trusteth in him. And just as this book is all about harnessing your emotions, you know, there's a lot of people that honestly, the way they try and have peace in their heart is to pray and ask God to remove all of the people who rub them the wrong way, <laughs> remove all of their problems. And when something like this virus hits, that is beyond their control. They feel justified in just falling apart like a $2 suitcase. But if you keep your mind stayed upon the Lord and what He's promised you, you can have perfect peace through all of this. Mm-hmm. And this is what I want to share out of Psalms chapter 91. There's many, many other scriptures. You know, last week, if you joined us, and you can go see this on archives if you didn't, but I dealt specifically with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And talked about not only what we believe in us personally uh, making it through this, but we are part of a community and we have to recognize that not everybody, even believers. We've got a lot of unbelieving believers, people that aren't really operating in faith, and we can't just impose our faith upon them. So mm-hmm. anyway, we talked about those things. But tonight, I wanted to go specifically to Psalms 91 because this is one of the most powerful Chapters in the Bible, there's 16 verses. I've got four pages of my Life for Today study notes uh, here on 16 verses. And so let me just read through this. I'm going to come back and, and deal with portions of this in more detail. But in case you haven't heard this, I think just the reading of the Scripture, if you will open up your heart, this could minister faith to you and could make a huge, huge difference. So Psalms chapter 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee. Notice the word. It didn't just say that he would deliver thee. It says surely. This is something you can count on. This is not just something that's for a few people, Mm -hmm. for the elite, for the super saints. This is talking to all of us. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. The Amplified Bible and the uh, NIV Bible both say that this noisome pestilence, they translate it as a deadly pestilence. Man, this is relative to where we are today. There are people fearing this, and yet this is a promise that surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Of course, this is a word picture here of like a mother hen, you know, when a storm comes, rain or anything like that, even the sun, just anything that could uh, injure her chicks, she puts her wings out and the chicks run under there and she protects them. And this is saying that we can hide under the shadow of his wings and it says his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Uh, Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 17, Thy word is truth. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this is saying that, you know, a shield is for protection. Your buckler is what they were talking about. It's a small shield. It's for uh, battle. The Lord will protect us when we're under attack. In verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Now think about this. The wording of this is so applicable to us today. We have a pestilence, a worldwide pandemic. It's an invisible enemy. You can't see who's got it. You can't see it coming. And that's one of the reasons that people are so afraid is because they just, they, they don't know if they're exposed to it. They don't know if, you know, by touching a person, something's going to happen. And so it says the uh, pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So I believe that the significance of this, the, the pestilence that walketh in darkness is talking about you can't see it. Something like an invisible plague, something mm-hmm. that's transmitted. So this applies perfectly to us. And it doesn't matter if it's something that you can't see or if it's something that's happening in the noonday sun. And if you, you saw it coming, God is going to be your protection for all of this. In verse 7, it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Man, that is an awesome promise. Now, I'm going to deal with some things. Most people say, well, this is not my experience, and it's not the experience of any Christian that I know. I'm going to deal with this apparent conflict between what the Scripture is saying and what most people are experiencing. But you just need to let this soak in. Don't go to interpreting the Word by your circumstances. That is a terrible method of Bible interpretation. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is interpret your circumstances by what the Word of God says. As it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 4, let God be true and every man a liar. You need to come to a place to where, God, your word is true. I'm reading to you from Scripture. And I'm going to give you some examples, not only scriptural examples, but examples of people that have applied this that have literally stopped the plague. You know, I remember reading the story that the Black Plague, that it happened multiple times. There was multiple times that the Black Plague Uh, went across Europe. At one time, it killed one-third of Europe's population. And uh, 95% of the people who got the plague died. Mm. Did you know that the coronavirus is really just the opposite? It's in the United States, it's 1.3% that have contracted it, have died. In Italy, it's up to 9 point something, right at 10%. But, you know, there's multiple reasons for that, and uh, an older population, some people have said that they also are reporting all deaths of the elderly, whether they, you know, they're just assuming it was coronavirus. But anyway, in the United States, 1.3% of the people who've contacted it to die. Compare that to the plague that had 95% mortality wow. rate. And yet I read an example of a man who was a pastor over one of these villages in Europe And the plague was just sweeping through the countryside. And anyway, he went out and stood on the boundary of his village. Mm -hmm. And he took Psalms chapter 91. Mm -hmm. And he says, Father, I am standing on this. No plague will come nigh our dwelling. And he spoke his faith and commanded that plague to stop. Mm -hmm. And it's the only village that I'm aware of that nobody died. Not a single person got sick. Not a single person died because they stood on the word of God. Yeah. I know many of you are thinking, well, I'm not sure that you can just do this across the board like this. I'm going to deal with this in more detail. But this is exactly what these scriptures are promising. That no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. Only with our eyes will we see others suffer. And it's not that God is a respecter of persons and that God is, you know, going to punish other people but not punish you. God has extended these promises To whosoever will. But not everybody is complying with this. Not everybody is believing this. I would say that probably the vast majority of people are operating in fear. Even believers. There's a lot of fear. 
associated with this. And, mm-hmm. you know, another verse that really applies here is First John chapter 4, verse 18, where perfect love cast out fear. If you are fearful, you have not been made perfect in love. No. And I'm not saying that to condemn anybody, but really one of the takeaways from this ought to be that if you are in fear, and the scripture I started with, Isaiah 26, 3, if you aren't in perfect peace, then it ought to reveal to you that, you know what, you have not been depending upon the Lord the way that you should and the way that He wants us to depend upon Him. It's not that God is just going to go out... Let me say this, that there's some people proclaiming that this is the judgment of God and that God is sovereign and that nothing happens but what this is His will. And they believe that it's God that's caused all of this disruption and all of these deaths. That is not true. I can guarantee you, if God was to judge the world, you wouldn't have to scratch your head and say, is this the judgment of God? You would know it. Mm -hmm. You would know it. This isn't a judgment from God. This is a virus that has not been contained, and there's reasons for that. That's not my purpose tonight. But uh, uh, you will only, if you stand in faith on Psalms 91, you will only see this in other people. It will not come nigh your dwelling, is what the uh, Scripture says. And in verse 9, it says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. That's what I've been talking about. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Did you know that Satan quoted these verses In Mm -hmm. Jesus' temptation, you can read that in Matthew chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 4. He quoted these verses trying to tempt Jesus. And Jesus expertly uh, recognized the deception because here's what the devil did. He quoted this verse where it says, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. When the devil quoted that to Jesus, he left off to keep thee in all thy ways. Mm Mm-hmm which this specifically says that the angels are there to protect us when we are walking in the ways that God ordained. This isn't saying that this will work if you go out here and rebel at God and just throw the door open to the devil. He comes to seek uh, whom he may destroy, to steal, kill, and to destroy. This isn't a promise that at any time and under any circumstances, if you have just messed up and given Satan total access and control of your life, that you're going to have all of these promises. So Satan conveniently left that out when he quoted this. And then in the next verse, it says, uh, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. He added some words there. And over in uh, Luke chapter four, he said, lest at any time you dash your foot against the stone, which again doesn't apply. You can't go out and just be in total rebellion towards God and give Satan total access to you and then expect God to bail you out of every single thing. That's not the way that this works. And then it says in verse 13, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot. Of course, mm-hmm. Satan is compared to a lion, First uh, Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Revelation chapter 12. He's compared to a dragon. He's also compared to a serpent. And a young lion is when they're their strongest, when they are, you know, in the prime of their life. This is just saying that, man, you will be able to stand against the devil regardless of what he throws at you, mm-hmm. even if it's the coronavirus, if it's the... COVID-19 virus. That's right. And again, yeah. please don't anybody misunderstand. I am not making light of this. I am not making light of people who have died. Mm-hmm. I think, if I remember correctly, there's up to 4,000 people worldwide that have died. I think it's over 600 in the United States. And for those people who've experienced this, this is a tragedy. But you need to put this into perspective. And I listened to President Trump today And I was really encouraged because he made this exact point himself. I've been making this uh, in all of the things that I've done to talk to people. Mm -hmm. But he said that there was between, I think it was, I think he said 30 to 70 something thousand people who have died of the flu this season already. And then he said that there's more people that died from car wrecks uh, than that. And yet we haven't taken cars away. 
We mm. haven't closed the economy down because of the flu. And again, this is not to say that yeah. those people who've experienced this and have experienced a loved one dying, that that's, that's a good thing. I'm not saying that we shouldn't take this seriously, but we need to put it into perspective and recognize that driving in a car is more dangerous mm -hmm. than the COVID-19. And again, only 1.3% of the people who have gotten it in the United States have died from it. And... Um, so we need to put things into perspective. This is not like the young lion in the adder. This isn't one of the greatest plagues that have ever happened. Yeah. Again, I'm doing these things by memory. If I get some of the details wrong, forgive me. But just two days ago, I looked it up in the Spanish flu that hit in 1917, I think killed over 20 million people mm -hmm. in the United States. Wow. 20 million compared wow. to right now, we're at 600 now, we haven't seen the end of this, but I don't think anybody is projecting anything like this. So my point I'm making, I'm not saying that it's not a serious problem to those who've been affected, but I'm saying that this isn't the worst thing. And this is promising that the young lion and the adder will be overcome. Satan in all of his strength, we will be able to overcome him. He goes on to say, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Mm -hmm. You know, here's another verse over in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. It says, and you shall serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. This didn't say that he would just heal you when you get sick. That's good. And I actually teach an entire course in our Karis Bible College on this, that there are people that they just allow sickness to come. They look at it as it's flu season, you know, it's allergy season, and they just expect it. But when they have something happen, then they start believing God and asking Him for healing. And that's better than not believing God at all. But I teach that the best is when you start taking these scriptures, that He will take sickness away from the midst of thee, that no plague will come nigh your dwelling. Only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. And I actually teach that you can come to a place that instead of allowing sickness to invade you and then resist it and get it out, mm -hmm. you can actually put a faith shield around you and you can stop sickness from coming at you. I am not the perfect example of this, but in 52 years, matter of fact, yesterday was the 52nd anniversary of the night that the Lord called me into the ministry and changed my life. And in 52 years, I have had sickness twice. That happened because I just totally depleted myself. I did stupid stuff, and I got a cold. And that's all I've had in 52 years. And that wasn't really sickness. That was stupidity. I am mortal, and you can't overextend yourself. Your body just... You, you wear yourself down. So anyway, my point is, I'm not the perfect example of this, but I believe I'm seeing this work in my life. And I say this all the time, that no germ can touch my body and live. And I believe that. You know, there was a man named John G. Lake, mm. and he actually had a healing ministry in Spokane, Washington. And for decades, he was actually, Spokane was voted the healthiest city in the United States, they actually mm -hmm. shut down one of the two hospitals, not because he was against doctors, but because they didn't need it. He had a healing ministry and people would come to him and they prayed and saw so many people healed that they honestly just didn't have the need. And they shut down one of the hospitals. And anyway, they were dealing with some kind of plague or sickness. And because he was so successful in this area, he was actually given a medical license. And so they had doctors yeah. helping the people who were struggling with this and dying. And one of the symptoms was that they would convulse and foam at the mouth right as they expired. And as they were dealing with this one man who, uh, you know, convulsed and he foamed at the mouth, one of the doctors looked at John Lake and said, aren't you glad that we have a vaccination against this? And John Lake just said, who's got a vaccination? And this medical doctor just panicked, like, you can't be dealing with these people. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. And, of course, John Lake knew that he wouldn't understand. But he, he said, 
No germ can touch my body and live. That's right. And this doctor just, of course, dismissed him as being a religious kook fanatic. And so John took one of these uh, slides that you put under a microscope and they just wiped that foam off of the man's mouth who had just died. They put it under a microscope. You could see the germs moving Mm -hmm. in there. And then he just touched it with his finger and boom, instantly, Mm -hmm. everything was still. And he made a believer out of that doctor. And you know what? All he was doing was claiming Psalms chapter 91. Mm -hmm. This isn't exceptional. This isn't just for me or for a few people. This is a promise to anyone who dwells under the shadow of the Almighty. So let me answer a question here. Some people say, if these promises are true, how come we don't see this today? Well, first of all, we do see it. Maybe not as much as we should, but I'm a living example with the exception of two times that I was just absolutely stupid and overextended myself. I've been walking in supernatural healing. I prayed for people who had AIDS, who coughed and spit on me, Mm -hmm. and I don't have AIDS. And I I have lived this. I am not the perfect example. I haven't arrived, but I've left. It's working in me, and I tell you, there are a lot of people that this is working in. We just had that service on Sunday. Carrie was with me, and Jesse Duplantis is of the same mind. Man, yeah, he just he was awesome. And, and I have no fear, and because of it, I'm around people. If I get around people, instead of me catching their sickness, they're going to catch my wellness. Amen. That's the way that I believe. And some people think, right. well, you're arrogant. No, I'm just believing Psalms 91. That's right. But if this is true, well, then how come we don't see this in every person? There's people that really love God. And yet they they get sick and problems happen to them. It says here in Psalms chapter 91, verse 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now that's a key right here. Verses 1 and 2 are a key to all of these promises. You have to be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. It didn't say that you visit there. This isn't some place you go once a week. This isn't a 15-minute devotion that you have. And again, I'm not against us going to church once a week. I'm not against us having a devotion. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that just give God that token bit of their lives. And then the rest of their life, they are plugged into the world. They're watching things. They're reading things. They are listening to music. They are thinking things that are completely contrary. You know, John Tesh was on our uh, broadcast Sunday and... um, John said something at the very end of the broadcast. You know, he has a radio program, and he and Connie emphasize a lot of hygiene and health type things, which Mm -hmm. is great. But he said he's practicing. He was likening this to how that people won't touch. They're putting distance between them. They're washing their hands. They don't touch their face, and they're practicing all of this physical hygiene. John said, I'm practicing faith hygiene. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. And this is what a lot of people aren't doing. They don't realize that every word that comes out of people's mouth, not only your mouth, but the mouth of other people, is either releasing life or death. Proverbs 18:21. death and life are in the power of the tongue. It didn't say death and life and a whole bunch of useless words that aren't, uh, you know, dangerous at all. They're just normal. No, everything you hear is either life or death. And we need to practice some faith hygiene to where we quit listening to the doubt and the fear of other people. And you have to dwell in that place. Not just visit there occasionally. And then look at verse 2. These things go together. It says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Boy, this is a major thing right here. And again, John Tesh has a great testimony about this. He just wrote a book entitled Relentless, which I read, and he's talking, this is one of his major chapters in there, and that is that Jesus said, whosoever will say unto this mountain, be removed. You have to speak to the mountain, not talk to God about your mountain. Mm -hmm. And this is where many people are going wrong. They're asking God, oh God, protect me from this virus. Or if you've already got the symptoms, oh God, heal me. But that's not what the Lord told us to do. He gave you authority. 
He said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, that he gave us authority over all sickness, over all disease to cast it out. And then in verse 8, he says, go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. He didn't tell us to pray for the sick. He told us to heal the sick, which implies that that's under our control. It's under our authority. And the way you release this authority is by the words that you speak. So you could say it this way. That Psalms chapter 91 and all of these promises are voice activated. You have to speak your faith. And you know, I've had some people criticize me because I say that no germ can touch my body and live. And people immediately, well, you know, you you could get sick and then what will happen? You'll look like a fool for saying this. If, If I was to get sick... Because, uh, uh, you know, of some sickness or some play. It doesn't undo what God promised. It just means I wasn't dwelling in faith in that area. I wasn't speaking it. I spoke forth my doubt and fear. It doesn't void the promises of God if I can't live up to it. These are promises from God. And I'm telling you that we have scriptures. You need to go through. Because I've, I've run through this just as quickly as I could. We want to leave some time to take some questions and answer this. But you need to go back and read this Mm -hmm. and not read it like it's for me or for somebody else. But this is for you and recognize that the whole thing is dependent upon you dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. Not visiting, but living there and then speaking forth your faith. If you aren't confident enough to stand up and say, no plague will come nigh my dwelling. Only with my eyes will I see others get sick from this, but it will not affect me. And if you think, well, I would never say that, then it won't work for you. You're getting exactly what you believe. You just don't believe that I can do that. I just don't believe that I have that authority. Well, then it won't work for you. But if you can accept these promises, this is tremendous scripture. And because of this, this is the reason that I don't have any fear I'm practicing and I'm following the guidelines that the president put down and the guidelines that our governor has put down. And I'm following this really for the sake of other people. But for me, I could go out and hug every person I see. And it's not going to affect me because I dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, does that mean that we don't use wisdom? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in church and there was a man there who was obviously sick. He was coughing, sneezing. And I thought about, you know, should I minister to him? Because this is, you know, by this time everybody was talking about this coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I thought, would Jesus minister to him? And I said, absolutely. So I just laid hands on him. He says, I'm sick. And I said, I don't care. And I grabbed his hands. I laid hands on his head. I prayed for him. And then I went and washed my hands. (laughs) So I'm not saying that you ignore these things. But I'm saying that I am not operating out of fear. And I am not limited to only a physical, natural answer. The president said today that they started testing of this malaria drug today in uh, New York State, and the promises of that working are are very positive. They've got other things that are working. They have new testing now. They're going to do things. And and what I'm saying is on, on Monday... If they come up, that's the day that they're going to reevaluate this 15 days is over. And if Monday they came up and said, we've now got a cure for it. Did you know everybody's fear would be all gone? Why? Because men came up with a physical answer to it. I'm telling you that right now, before men figure this out, God figured this out thousands of years ago and gave you promises that if you'll just mix it with faith, You can be just as confident, you can be just as secure as if there was a a vaccine for this, as if there was a treatment for it. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world, and you do not have to wait on men to come up with an answer. God had an answer before the problem even existed. Man, that's awesome. That's good. So anyway, that's a quick rundown of Psalms chapter 91. I hope this helps you, and I hope that you will receive this as an encouragement and study this and say it. Take this psalm and speak it out loud until you get to where you can say it from your faith instead of what you heard Andrew say or somebody else say. Yeah, I think that's the difference when people say, well, you know, I just believe what Andrew believes or I believe Mm -hmm. what Kenneth Copeland believes and it's got to become real. It's going to be like the man who said, uh, 
I cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And the demon said, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? And those (laughs) demons beat him up. That's right. So it has to be personal. Yeah, the the devil's going to tell you, uh, Jesus I know and Andrew I know, but where's your faith? Yeah. This needs to become your revelation. I think that's when you get a revelation of God and who he is towards you. And that's why it says perfect love casts out fear. You just realize, you know, I am loved of God. I am loved of the Father, and because of that, as a father, he's going to protect me as his child. And boy, that just rises faith in you. And you know, I didn't take time. I was trying to rush through this. But over here, and I think it's the seventh verse, I'll just do it now. It says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. It says, There shall no evil befall thee. And let's see, there's another verse right here. Because he has set his love upon me. That's down in verse 14. Because okay. he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. And and that's talking about the first verse said, because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, this will happen. Now it says, because he's set his love upon me. So that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Dwelling in the secret place of the Most High is dwelling in his love. Amen. Perfect Amen. love will cast out fear. That's awesome. Well, we've got some really good questions, so we're going to get through them as much as possible. I'm sorry at the beginning I forgot to tell you. Just go down to whatever forum you're at, uh, looking at. Go down to the chat section. So if you have questions, we'll try to get through as many tonight as possible. But what's nice, again, we're going to have the next three nights to answer a whole bunch of questions. So you'll want to join us if your question does not get answered tonight. So... Uh, uh, JMC999 uh, says this. I'm not sure if this question has been asked, but here it is. How would Psalms 91 apply to believers who have not renewed their minds to the point of knowing that they know that they know and believe Psalms 91 works for them? How do you do that? Well, it's like verse 2 says. You have to say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And if a person has heard this but doesn't really believe it and doesn't have confidence in it, they won't speak it out. Yeah. And so it doesn't really apply to a person who's not in faith. You have to be strong enough in faith that you can say this and mean it from your heart. Over in Romans chapter 10, it says in verse 9, If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And then verse 10 says, For with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made. It's not just saying these words, but then not believing it. Yeah. And it's not just believing it, but then not saying it. You have to believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. And when you get your heart and your mouth in agreement, then every one of these promises will come to pass. It says that your tongue is like the rudder on a great ship, that it will steer. So on that note... uh, MTL in chat asks this, what words can I use to bring peace to unbelievers who are in total panic and survivor mode? Words that I can mutter to reject their negativity and fear in front of them or going into another room to pray? You know, I think that Christians are too concerned about unbelievers misunderstanding them. And so they hold back and they try and sneak up on them. And just I think sometimes it's just good like <laughs> when people say, You know, we're all going to die. And you say, no germ can touch my body and live. I think you ought to just hit them with the full (laughs) array and they will be shocked and say, what are you saying? Let me give you a testimony of this that just last Wednesday, it's less than a week ago, I was scheduled to speak at a meeting at the Broadmoor and they had 350 people registered to show up. Well, only a hundred showed up because of the virus and the Broadmoor went ahead and did it. And the mayor was there and he was one of the speakers. So he sanctioned it. It's not like we broke the rules, but they had 50 in one room and 50 in another room (laughs) and everybody was sitting long distances apart. And anyway, I was talking to the lady who put the whole thing on and she was saying, man, are, are you scared by this? And I just did exactly what I'm talking about. I said, no germ can touch my body and live. And she goes, what? <laughs> and I, I, I quoted some scripture and she mm-hmm. says, you think that works today? And I told her, I said, I saw my son raised from the dead after being dead for five hours. And she nearly fell out of her chair. And mm-hmm. I mean, within five minutes, she says, I'm type 1 diabetic. She showed me she had a pump on her, that she had to have stuff pumped into her. And she says, please pray for me. And in five minutes, I prayed and I said, now look, I've prayed for people and it takes 21 days and their blood sugar comes down. And I said, you just do whatever you feel peace about. Within five minutes, she took that pump out and threw it away. She says, I'm healed. I'm totally healed. That's awesome. 
And I didn't sneak up on her. Amen. And I honestly believe that we are too concerned about other people. This is an opportunity to let your light shine. Don't put a cloth over it and just let a little bit shine. People are in darkness. You need to give them the full uh, thrust of what you believe. And and people will reject you, but there will be people received too. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I think people are waiting for these supernatural moments, you know, to share their faith. This is a supernatural moment. If Amen. people are hungry and people are in fear, and boy, when the enemy comes in, man, we, we respond to it with boldness and love and of God. They don't want somebody who's just a little bit less scared than they are. and. And they want somebody who's just totally different. Yeah. They're looking for something different. Well, it? the enemy would love to do is not only just get you in your house and, and, and get you away, but that when you are out with people, to shut you up. To shut you mm-hmm. up in your house and to shut you up with your mouth. And just where you just, I don't want to offend anybody and I don't want to. Boy, this is the time to speak out. Absolutely. Speak life. Speak joy. So be bold. Don't hold back. Amen. So, uh, Elaine on Facebook asked, but she said, how much of the news should we really believe? Boy, (laughs) I I heard a laugh in the other room. (laughs) Um, I would say very little of it. Yeah. You know, let me, let me refer you back to the bird flu, the avian flu. It's called different things in different Mm -hmm. places. But I was over in Scotland when they were killing poultry. You could see them stacked up 20 and 30 feet high, and I mean smoke was rising up. And I was over there, and they asked the leading expert in the U.K., they said, can this mutate into something that will affect humans? And he said, oh, without a doubt. There's no question about if it'll happen. It's just a matter of when. Matter of fact, I heard that exact same thing said about this coronavirus. And... um, And anyway, he said it might be one year or a maximum of two years. One third of the world's population will die from avian flu. And exactly two years later, I was back in Scotland. I was watching BBC News and they had a report that there had been a total of seven. I think it was either seven or 12 deaths in people worldwide. Mm. And it has never become a factor. And so anyway, what I'm saying is people would say, well, you've got to be worst case scenario. You've got to err on the side of caution. Uh, one of the things that's happening with this coronavirus is that they are taking these extreme measures. And I'm not here to second guess them and say that what they've done isn't right or anything like mm-hmm. that. But I am saying that just as President Trump said, that sometimes the cure is worse than the disease itself. And if we just keep extending this thing, there are going to be more people die from the poverty and the problems that this is causing than by the flu. Mm -hmm. And so it is being exaggerated. Worst case scenarios are being put out there. And I can't give you a percentage on what part, uh, you know, how much of the news you should believe, but I would think it's a minuscule amount, not very much. I love how you've said it before. You talk about this 10 spy network Mm -hmm. is that there's always going to be people. It's like, you know, remember the 12 spies went out and 10 came back and said, yeah, it's everything's, you know, it's beautiful, but there's giants in the land and we're going to be destroyed where only two had faith and said, God is well able. Don't forget what he's done. So I think that's what you have to do. You have to, you can hear all this negativity, but you get to either side with the 10 spies and oh you know the giants are going to consume us or our god is bigger and so you're going to have to listen with that discernment um or not listen at all if that if that's affecting your unbelief well it's again like john tesh was saying we need to practice some faith hygiene Mm -hmm. and anything that causes you fear and unbelief and anxiety and takes away your peace you're being polluted. Yeah. You're being contaminated, and you need to get away from it. And we're commanded that any thought that exalts itself above the name of Jesus, Amen. we're supposed we're supposed to. It's not our pastor's job or somebody else's job to cast that down and encourage us and soothe us. We're supposed to take authority over that and say, you know what? That's not my inheritance. That's not what the Word of God says over me. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17 says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper, mm-hmm. and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. And I believe that it's using weapon and tongue interchangeably. Mm-hmm. Words are weapons. Mm-hmm. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And it says you have to condemn it. Yeah. That means that if you hear somebody saying, everybody's going to get this, you're going to die. You have to immediately condemn. You have to negate those words. And if you yeah. don't, 
those words have power. They're like seeds. And if you don't counter it, it'll enter into your heart and it'll begin to start springing Mm -hmm. and bringing forth fruit. The scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Unbelief comes the exact same way by hearing. But it, it's hearing things contrary to the Word of God. And when people tell you that there is no cure for this, that right there is unbelief. Yep. There's no cure in the natural. No. But God's got a cure By for it. By His stripes, you were healed. <laughs> and again, <laughs> put this into perspective. 99, 98 to 99% of all people who get this survive. Yeah. It's not the worst thing. It's not as bad as some of the, like mm-hmm. Ebola came through. And yet we survive that. SARS and Mars and all of these different things, the flu, the Spanish flu and the plague and all of these things. Mm -hmm. This is relatively mild. It's more contagious than many of those things are, but the survival rate is way up there. You need to counter that fear. That's why we're having these Bible studies. Amen. Well, we, we had some great questions. A lot of you have a- asked some, and so we've, we've covered a lot of them. But we're going to continue the rest of this week. So, again, Wednesday, tomorrow night, we're going to have Billy Epperhart and Paul Milligan. They're going to be sharing on finances. Thursday, how to share it with your children, families, non-believers, how to be bold with that. And then Friday, again, on healing, because we've had some other questions just on healing, that you're even struggling with sickness outside of coronavirus. How during this time do you really see healing happen not just for corona but for other things you're believing for so you're going to want to you're going to want to join us and one other thing i'd like to point out and uh we've been emphasizing this the last couple of days if you're stuck at home and if you're looking for something to do i've heard that netflix has gone up to <laughs> download and stuff did you know we have over two hundred thousand oh, yeah. hours of free material on awmi.net. Yep. And we, we figured that out, that if you listen 24 hours a day, that's 22 years worth of watching, 24 hours a day. And if you go eight hours a day, it's 68 years. 68. So we got plenty for you and your family to be doing. There's videos on there. There's uh, 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 yeah, the, the, music the God, Yeah, the God with us right now. It's so powerful on gospeltruth.tv. Check that out. It's not only Andrew. Andrew, but Andrew and friends, so some of our other incredible ministers are also on there. They're speaking faith and life, so you'll get blessed on all levels. So you choose what you put in you. Amen. So thank you for joining us. Yes. I believe that this has helped you tonight. We have people standing by at our phone, 719-635-1111. And if your faith has been quickened, the Scripture says two of you, if you agree on anything, it'll be done. So you could call and get prayer. Amen. And I believe it would make a big difference. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.